Merhaba arkadaşlar, Edcon 2023 Montenegro'dayız. Bugün yanımızda Tellor'un CEO'su ve kurucu ortaklarından Brenda Loya. Brenda Loya bulunmakta. Kendisine çok güzel sorular hazırladık. Kendisiyle birlikte gelecek planlarına da konuştuk. Çok güzel gelişmeler var. Bunların hepsini sizler için hazırladık. Ve Brenda'ya çok güzel sorular soracağız. İlk sorumuzla başlayalım. Hello, can you introduce yourself? Yes. And how did you start crypto? How you heard crypto? Yes, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Teller. We're a decentralized oracle and my background is actually in economics. I was an, econ an economist for the US government for different types of data uh, over a decade. And I got interested in crypto because of the technology. I just sort of started researching it. Um, it seemed really cool. I studied economics because I really, really liked it. I did love my job. And this is one of the few things that are happening in the world that have a huge impact or are super interesting to economists because you can actually create like these real life experiments with coins and, and you know, try, trying out yourself to do money supply or, you know, just play with the money supply and play with different things, different um, economic concepts that I was actually at a position to become part of this technology at a point that it's actually building and it's so close to what I actually I guess studied so that's how I ended up initially getting involved just sort of researching it for my own purposes and then I used to work uh, with this guy his name his uh, Nick he's my co-founder um, And you know, at some point, we're both economists. We went off our own ways, and he started this startup for decentralized derivatives. And I was, when I was researching this, and we got together for like a dinner, and he was like, I was like, well, let me buy something or invest something, you know. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no, no. What if instead, if I raise money, you join me? And this is, I have a career in, as an economist, like a tenure. So it was a big step, but I really loved it. And I decided to join him on the first, um, I guess, enterprise uh, that was uh, decentralized derivatives. But it was in 2018, where we're a little too That's early. Cool. Yeah, for derivatives uh, platforms. Um, and we found out very quickly that the infrastructure for crypto generally is not, it was not at par for what we wanted to build. We looked around everywhere to try and find an actual Oracle solution that was truly decentralized and launched because at the time. Um, so we started building that on a hackathon in DC in the, I guess the summer of 2018. And then, um, We just got more interest uh, from investors on the Oracle side. And once we got an investment for that, we pivoted from decentralized derivatives <laughs> to an Oracle product that we developed because we needed something, not because, you know, for to actually be its own thing. And now it's what we do. I think nice. as soon as we realized that there was that gap in the infrastructure. You have an amazing story. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you uh, your answer. Um, let's uh, ask the second question. Uh, could you briefly explain the uh, technology behind the Teller? Right. So it's actually, I think it's fairly simple. Um, we've tried to focus on making it truly decentralized. So we implemented economic incentives to make sure that all the parties behave the way that we think they should behave. Uh, Nick and I sat a lot on this and just playing out the game theory. But also like it was very simple because a lot of this is already implemented on Ethereum mm -hmm. or like open, open blockchains. Um, what we did is basically anybody can become a data reporter on Teller. We have the smart contracts uh, you know, on different blockchains, but basically they can go to the smart contract and you stake Teller, TRB, and you risk losing it if you provide bad data. But you stake it because then users can come and basically they post payments, we call them, call them tips, and they say, hey, whoever provides me the data that I need first, 
gets this payment. So they stake and they're able to then participate in the network and provide the data and take those payments. Now anybody can actually come and dispute the validity of that data for a dispute fee. And we obviously have a fee because we have to compensate them in case it's like. So the, di the initial dispute is 10% of the stake. So there's a lot of incentive for people to just go and make sure that the data is correct because then if they are correct when they dispute the value they get to take the whole stake so they get slashed mm -hmm. and so they make a pretty good profit out of that and then um, in terms of the users they don't have to wait for the dispute to be resolved they can just re um, request their data and they can get it on the next block um, the thing with teller though it is sort of an optimistic oracle you have to allow time for people to catch bad data. So you have to allow about 15 minutes to make sure that the data is not disputed. The longer you wait, the more likely it is that it is not going to be disputed or there's not going to be a reorganization of the chain. It's similar to how when you send crypto to a centralized exchange, they make you wait for several confirmations before they actually tell you, okay, you, yes. this, this is your money. Yes. You know, So it, that's how it works. I feel like it's fairly simple. It's very um, it, you know, it, it's an open system. Anybody can become a data reporter. Anybody can become a user. The users do have to specify what type of data they want because that way anybody will be able to provide them that data and anybody will be able to validate that data or dispute yes. it. Yes, thank so. you. <laughs> um, last questions. Um, um, what are the um, Taylor's future plans and uh, goals? And uh, do you have any plans about uh, Turkish community? Well, um, in general, we, we think of Teller as being a protocol, and we hope that it's actually implemented everywhere, not just like yes. in the US, but in Turkey, everywhere that it's needed. We want it to actually be part of infrastructure. I know right now there's a team. We are supporting it, but it's completely open. It's completely open source as well, so people could fork it and, and take it and make it better. Um, I think that's you know one of the like amazing things about this technology. Like now you have EVM chains all over the place, yes. and it doesn't matter who, where or who. Like it's just the, te the actual technology that people take and just make it better. For us, our main goals right now are uh, really at trying to educate the community about really looking under the hood and making sure that what they're using is truly decentralized and they're not going to get rugged. Um, and then for Teller itself, we're working on a lot, a lot of monitoring tools to make sure that, because it is an open system, users yes. have to take some ownership of making sure that everything, or you know, at least we get to the point, hopefully one day, they're just like, you don't need Vitalik to run Ethereum, you should not need the team yes. to run our protocol. And that's where we want to get to. Um, honestly, like we just think like everywhere in the world, we just want to be there where, you know, we're, pretty decentralized and pretty open to hoping that anybody, not just in Turkey, but everywhere, <laughs> like use the technology and really stay safe and... Um, can we say uh, together, uh, hello Turkey, Turkish? Yes. Merhaba right. Turkey. Okay. Merhaba. Merhaba. Turkey. Turkey. Evet. Merhaba Turkey and our name, Coin okay. okay. Can we say it together? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Merhaba Turkey. Turkey. Coin Mendes. Coin Mendes? Coin Mendes. Coin Mendes. Evet. Let's say again. <laughs> yes, let's do this again. Merhaba, Türkiye. Coin Mendes. Merhaba, Türkiye. Coin Mendes. Evet. <laughs> Ma no. <laughs> I, I feel like I did not say that right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you can say I'm sure. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Merhaba, Türkiye. Coin Mendes. Coin Mendes. Evet. Teşekkürler. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> So sorry I butchered Turkish. Okay, thank you for answers. Thank you, yes. Um, thank you guys for having me. We will share on our YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. Okay,